Hello and welcome to Skander Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram as Skander and I'm Skander Knits as a designer on Ravelry. Don't forget my Ravelry group Skander Knits, which is the best place to take part in knit alongs and giveaways and just the community and get passion support and all that stuff. So yeah, hi, welcome to my knitting podcast. To new viewers, this is where I sit and talk about knitting every so often. I am guest on a sort of two episodes per month kind of thing right now, and that seems to be working out for me. Uh, to returning viewers, welcome back. Um, I've been knitting, I've been knitting a lot. That's pretty much all I've been doing. So we do have quite a bit of content today. I released a new pattern. I am running a cal. I have finished three things, all of which are upcoming patterns. And and that was the neighbor's cat on the sofa. Why, why are you here? I, I need you to see this. Okay, so that's that. Anyway, I totally forgot where I left off, but I am running the yellow skin in its garment cal where you just need to know any of my garment patterns that you have started and finished during 2021. I think I'm gonna let the cat out. So if you wanna take part in that, just use the hashtag on Instagram or post in the Ravelry group. I will start a thread at the end of the year for actually entries. But you can always take part in the chatter right now. So that's that. Also, I have published a new pattern. It is a surprise to no one that it is the Librarian Pullover, which ended up being the name of the pattern. This is quite possibly the garment pattern of mine that I am the most proud of. I know it's a bit of a cliche that like my favourite is always the last one that I made and I mean yeah it, it is. Okay the cat's coming back. What are you doing? And I am certainly no exception to that. I, I do I'm, I'm really proud of this. I'm so proud of the whole arm size shaping that you all do simultaneously with the body. Uh, there's some very short like shoulder grafting at the end and that's the only assembly you need to do uh, unless you count three needle bind off the shoulder and the underarm which you probably do for most of your uh, garments, you know, the underarm I mean. Um, this is made in Hillesvog Ridde. I know I kept saying Vidde a lot in the last episode. Um, that's basically because Hillesvog launched Vidde and Vidde at the same time. These are both kind of Aran weight yarns where uh, Verde is pure pelt wool and Vidde is half and half pelt wool and lamb's wool. And I use the half and half pelt wool and lamb's wool. So apologies for getting that mixed up. But they're otherwise pretty much identical. They're meant to be used together. Um, they just have different names because of the different fiber blends so you can attain different colors. And this is it. This is a non-cable cable sweater. It is made using twisted stitches, a method that maybe some of you are familiar back when there was a, the theory craze, everyone doing the theory card again, which is really nice. Um, I think I'm going to talk a bit more about twisted stitches later in this episode when we get to acquisitions. Uh, but yeah, the librarian is out there in the world. And... Uh, for anyone who doesn't know already, the puff shoulders are strictly optional. Strictly optional. So there is the main text where I've written regular shoulders, and then you can jump to the end of the pattern where I've replaced that section with the puff shoulder instruction. So it's pretty easy to like jump back and forth there if you do want puff shoulders, which I certainly did and and do. So there, librarian. I am obsessed with this. I could easily just make several of these. It was so quick, it was easy, it was such a smooth design process. I am utterly grateful to my very quick test knitters who just rushed through this. So that's really nice. So there, librarian out in the world. And I will also say, and I keep forgetting to mention this, for that I'm really sorry, uh, if you want to find out when the pattern comes out and I announce the introductory discount code, the best way to to know uh, is to sign up to my newsletter. That's I will always, 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 always put that there. I introduce discount codes there, sometimes even freebies. I've, I think I've had like two free patterns since I started the newsletter this autumn. So yeah, uh, do sign up for that if you don't want to miss out because making YouTube videos for every pattern is a bit more than I can manage. I do it for some of them, but other times it's just totally uh, not feasible. And we're gonna get to the not feasible in the next project because I finished a cardigan pattern that will come out very soon. And I don't know if I will have time to do a video, so that's probably where it's gonna be best to 
to just sign up to the newsletter and then you will find out when it comes out, you'll get a code and you'll also find out when there are other like exciting things that are exclusive to newsletter signups because you know I want to keep you there. So I showed you this card again in last episode and it was such a quick knit, dare I say even quicker than the librarian, but uh, I ran out of yarn. <laughs> And I thought for a while I was going to have to wait for a long time because all my usual stockists of Hillisburg pelt wool, they didn't have it. But luckily for me, Knit With Attitude, my local yarn shop did. But then they had less than they had listed in stock. So when I got in touch, they was like, oh no, we don't have it. And then I was prepared to wait for a long while and then I had to wait like a day or two. And then they had it after, uh, it was really, really quick. I was very, very amazed by that. So. I managed to finish this card again like yesterday and this is it. Wow that looked really crumble. <laughs> I haven't cut up the front stick yet because I, I just haven't. It, does, it takes me a minute and I don't know why I put it off because like to me right now sticking is nothing like I do it pretty easily. I don't think about it even. I just stick everything. <laughs> so this is it. I'm gonna see if I can get further back so you can see. Yep. Here, here she is. I've, I've clearly folded her in a very awkward way because it's a weird fold here. I'm sure I've sat on it or something. So there. Uh, this cardigan was basically just designed for two reasons. One is that I really wanted to play more around with that construction method that I've used in The Librarian and it's also very similar to what I've used for Sinkestra. And in upcoming patterns as well, I just wanted a very simple garment pattern that really only focused on that construction. <sighs> but I also wanted a cardigan with pelt wool because I'm kind of obsessed with that right now. Because I have some other garments in pelt wool that are not my designs and I wear them a lot and they keep me very warm. I was wearing the Emblas Momoyaki by Tina Hoagland, Sticky Silla earlier when it was quite cold. I was walking out at night and it was windy and I was walking my flatmate and she was quite cold and I was just wearing that knitted cardigan, which usually knitted cardigans are not very windproof. They're warm until the wind comes, but this was still keeping me warm. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I clearly need more pelt wool in my wardrobe. So that was like, well, obviously it's gonna have my new favorite construction. That I don't even know what to call it. A bottom of contiguous, if you will and I wanted pelt wool. So that's that's the idea. I did end up introducing a steak because you can't make me pearl the whole card again. It's never gonna happen. Like don't don't be fooled. Uh, so it's also really a nice introduction to steaks. I dare say steaks are easier to start off with when you do stocking net than colour work. Which I know some people are gonna think, oh well what's the point? Then you can just pearl because you're not doing colour work and colour work is really annoying on the wrong side. And like yes but I, 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 I would rather stick them personally. And I think it's fine if you wanna convert this to work flat, that would be probably quite easy. But I also think of all the people who are still holding back the steak scissors and are just like, I don't wanna, you know, sorry for that uncharitable uh, <laughs> interpretation. But I thought, you know, just, just get you a pattern that's quick to make up that, is an easy steak introduction. It has two steaks actually, it's just the front of the cardigan but I obviously also did one for the neckline which I have cut up and tacked down on the inside so don't ask me why I couldn't do it for the whole thing while I was at it but there we are. And yeah, I am using a lot of words just to say, hey do you want to chunk your cardigan with a steak so you can get into it? So I say chunky, I used a DK weight yarn, Hillisburg Tinder but I held it double and when you hold it double well the GK plus DK tend to be <laughs> chunky or bulky. So I hear some of you say oh well, why didn't you just use Blonde because that's chunky pelt wool from Hillis Wagen. Yeah I mean yeah stop calling me out <laughs> but yes. Uh, the reason is twofold. Uh, they didn't have it in any of the yarn shops where I would normally have bought it and the other reason in that when holding Tinder double, you get slightly more meters, slightly. Uh, it sits somewhere between Bologna and Varda, double Tinder. So I would hesitate to use Varda, I think that's a little bit too fine, but you could definitely use Bologna, but it would be slightly thicker again. So 
that's us basically what's happening with this one. As you can see, mine has puff shoulders because I'm just really, really into these shoulders right now. But again, I have written two shoulder instructions in the pattern. Is the pattern out yet? No, I literally just finished this card again. I haven't written up the pattern. I mean, I've written most of it, but I still need to send it to my tech editor. Um, probably need to take some photos and see me in some ends, but yeah. I don't know if there's anything else to say, uh, it's mostly just stocking up, but I felt like I had to justify it somehow by putting in this very simple twist stitch pattern at the front. So again, it looks like cables, but actually it's just twisted stitches. Uh, if you really just wanted a stockinette cardigan, this is very easy to just knit plain instead of doing the chart, but I kind of wanted to give it some distinguishing features and this seemed like a good idea. I wasn't really, really pleased with the grey. Uh, I'm sure some are wondering, well, Ellie, we all know that Tinder has an amazing burgundy and red and blue and green. <laughs> what gives? I mean, I also love grey, but the feeling of undyed pelt wool, it's like having a pet. And I want to... <laughs> Yeah, so I just really like the feel of this when it's undyed, especially after it's been given a block, which it currently has not. Oh, it's gonna be so lovely. It's gonna be so lovely, but rest assured, this is not the last time I will be designing with Hillisburg Pelt Wall. I'm also working on another cardigan in Tinder. We're not ready to talk about that yet, but I will show you that when it will closer to it. Anyway, that's enough designs for our day. Is it, is it though? Because I have done another one. And I don't know when this is coming out yet. Technically, I could launch it now, but um, I want to maybe give the dryer heads up first. I've heard that's good practice. Hi, this is Ellie from the future here. I have since recording this video actually just released the pattern. So I'm going to put the code up on screen. I am sorry for being like this. The Synchestra pullover. I have mentioned that I'm working on a Sinkester pullover for a while now. I have not mentioned what yarn I'm using for it because Sinkestra was made in Vinyl. Vinyl is a sport weight, pure wool yarn, very sticky, rustic, good for steaking. But I thought, hang on a minute, why, how, well, <laughs> why can't I just make the pullover without any steaks and then I won't even need to use any particular type of yarn. I dare say I could even use a DK Superwash Merino, which I do happen to have in stash. And I got a huge pile of that from Amy of Stranded like eons ago. Probably enough to do two garments because I still have like five skeins left. I used up exactly four for this one. I got the yarn without a label because it was like color came out slightly wrong, which I don't really see. But... So I think it's deep Felix, but don't quote me on that. Your girl here is now designing Superwash Merino garments. Who, who knew? Uh, we already have, you know, Cherry Puff behind me here. You've seen that before. Without further ado. Okay, that was very dark. There we are. Hey, look how that's showing up in this yarn. Just let's have a moment and appreciate the dye job with this texture and this boat neck. This was stupid flattering like <laughs> the wording i have taken photos for this already and it looks real hacking good it fits really well i am someone who is very torn when it comes to boat necks sometimes they annoy me uh they can't be too much they can't be too little and this one is just right it's just the right width where it sits low enough to not bother me here but it's not so wide that my bra straps are showing it's just just right um i seem just like an inch on each side so it, um, yeah, wow. I, again, very proud of myself. Uh, so it uses the same construction method that I've been experimenting with lately, the one where you knit the body in the round up to the underarm, same with the sleeves, join them together as though you were to work a bottom of raglan or yoke, but then you place decreases so that you get something that looks like a set in sleeve, but no sleeve need to be set in. The light conditions today are <laughs> interesting so i hope this shows but you can see the arm side just makes it look like you know a store ball sweater such as the one i'm wearing that's that's how it is looking right now it's blowing out the camera quite a bit let me see if i can get further back so you can see more 
Wow, I did not think this was gonna be so hard to show off on camera, but there you are. I have a test to just show me their versions. Uh, there's one in green, there's one in white, and they look amazing. And what I'm really happy with this particular pattern is that it does seem to work well on a lot of different yarns. I have attained the same row gauge and stitch gauge with Superwash Merino and Sport Weight wool. Uh, so that's pretty good. You could still use Fionnul, you could use Superwash Merino DK. I dare say you could probably get away with Sport, like it seems very versatile. So as I said earlier, if you don't want to miss out on that, if you don't want to miss out on the discount code, uh, do make sure to sign up to my newsletter. I would normally say follow me on Instagram, but honestly, I'm kind of disillusioned with Instagram at the moment. The whole way that like the algorithm works is like, oh, hello, small fiber business. You have worked your butt off for 30,000 followers. Well done you. We'll show your post to 3,000 of them. How about that? And those 3,000 are mostly people who just started following you rather than those who are like, you know, following you for the longest. It's just like, money rules on that app and I'm just a small business. So if you really do wanna, I guess, keep up with things as well as support me, then like, yeah, newsletter. I'm gonna try to remember to link to the newsletter below as well. That would be great, wouldn't it? So as you will remember from last time, I had made the Stonewood baby pullover. I say baby, it's gonna go up 12 year size, but this is the one year size and I said I wanted to make multiple versions of this, such as a cardigan version, and I have finished the cardigan version. I got some ends to weave in and some buttons to sew on, but it is effectively done. Um, so it needs blocking. These both need blocking. They're looking a bit curled up right now. That's the cardigan. <laughs> oh, really, truly does need a bit of a block. So. Don't know when these are coming out. I want to make one more version of this and probably just launch them at the same time. So don't hold your breath, but they are about to come out. You may wonder like, why has she, she done this one? Not in the contrast color when she did the contrast color here. Well, I ran out of blue, the dark blue. That's that's the design choice. <laughs> so these are made in Fenul and Usk. They're both sort of sport weight, two fingering weight, pure wool yarns, my usual, my, my favorites. Um, as you will see, the baby version of the pullover has like a button band for the side here so you can get their heads through without too much querying. Uh, the larger sizes obviously don't need this, you don't need that for a 12 year old, but they are going to get some short rows because they obviously are older and, and need that. That's the pullover and well, the cardigan doesn't need that because the cardigan has an opening and that will be the case for all sizes. So that's kind of where we're at with these right now. Just, just having fun designing. I love that for me until, you know, my PhD viva happens and I have to start focusing on that again. But for now, I'm just enjoying that little creative burst. So yeah, wow, I seem to have got through my projects a lot quicker than I thought I would, because I only have one project left to talk about. And it's right behind me here on my knitting machine. So first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pattern, then I'm gonna try to show you actually what I am doing. <laughs> So this is Susan Crawford Stitching Time Volume 1. Uh, she has Volume 1, she's got Volume 2, she's got the Vintage Shetland Knitting Book. And there's a lot of things in this book that I do want to make. I have already made the Jan sweater, which I think was in Volume 2. And I knew as soon as I'd finished it that I wanted to make another one. When I finally found what I wanted to make, which is the Frilly Jumper, it's all worked flat and I thought, well, you know what, so was the jam sweater, but I can modify that to be in the round and then I, I looked more at the pattern and it's like worked flat from the bottom front up over the shoulders and down again. And that, I, uh, <laughs> so I figured it's time to know how to do this on the knitting machine. Because it really shouldn't be that hard. Like making eyelets and decreases and increases on a knitting machine, it's pretty straightforward. I do need to refresh my memory on how to work some bits of it, like one shoulder and not the other, that kind of thing. But apart from that, I, I, I should be able to do this. And so I have started. So let's see if we can adjust the camera a bit here. It's not the best camera management I've ever done, but there we are. So this is my um, Silver Reed LK150. I have two knitting machines. I also have a brother knitting machine from like the 80s uh, upstairs. 
And I've had a lot of hard time working with the Brother machine. I don't find it very beginner friendly. I make a lot of mistakes on it. It seems very fiddly. I don't know if it's the machine or if it's me. Uh, but as soon as I got this machine, which is a lot more entry level friendly, I make a lot fewer mistakes. The mistakes I make are easier to fix. Um, this is more compatible with the sort of yarn weights that we keep in stash, hand knitters. Whereas the standard weight gauge machine I have upstairs is better for anything from fingering weight and thinner. Dare I say some fingering weights are even too thick. <laughs> so this I would much more recommend to people who are just thinking about machine knitting and also it's, it's still on the market and that helps too. So I currently have the frilly jumper hanging here and making the eyelets and decreases are fairly simple. I guess the only thing I would say is different is that your row starts here because you've got the wrong side facing. So why you would normally think in this direction in knitting. Actually, you better think in this direction. I have now made the front of the body. It's all very stretched out and weighed down with these machines. So if you drop a stitch, it's like, Phew! and that has happened and it does happen and it happened in the eyelid pattern. Ah, it's, it's a nightmare, but I, I have found it easier to work with, around than the one upstairs. So now I'm ready to start increasing for the sleeves and I found that I need to increase to 153 stitches which is a problem when you have a machine with only 150 so-called needles. So mine's gonna have to have four stitches too little because obviously I want it to be symmetrical so ipsy there will be slightly shorter sleeves but Oh well. So the yarn I'm using is Olan Fingering Weight Merino. I don't think there's any nylon in this yarn, but I could be wrong about that. It's a lovely colour and this I bought at Woolen in Dublin back when we, you know, did things like that. <laughs> and I am alternating on the machine, which means that for every two rows that I work, I just shift them around over here. So that's why I have two strands dangling down. Yeah, getting the hang of it. Um, I'm using tools from both of my machines. I got this like latch hook here, which is good when you lose a stitch because you can sort of nest it up and pick it up from the wrong side facing. Normally I would use a crochet hook, but that's really hard when you've got the wrong side facing. You can see I have a lot of weights hanging here. These are all from my other machine and well, they work on my other machine. I also have these claw weights. They look like this and just have like a hole in the bottom so you can hang any weight here and the claws just go straight into the knit fabric. Uh, I was a bit worried about that before that they would like harm the knit fabric but they don't seem to be doing that so that's fine. So I can really recommend getting some of these. I find that most machine knitters they like to use these claw weights. You hang this on then you've got this weight here but I don't find them really heavy enough and often the claws get kind of weirdly bent. They tend to be second hand and I just, you know. So I'm much like the ones where I can attach whatever weight I want to the claws. That probably made no sense to you if you don't work on machines. But there you are. I know a lot of people have wanted me to film me working with it, but honestly, as a beginner to these machines, I just get stressed out when I work on them. Uh, it's better now than it was before. But I just make a lot of mistakes. I have absolutely nothing to teach anyone yet. You want to find people who actually know what they're doing. But I do want to really dispel the myth that this is somehow quicker or more efficient or cheating or any of the, the usual myths. I could probably have done this and more in the time that it's taken me to do this when you account for the time that it's taken me to set up, to fix mistakes, to pick up drop stitches. All the time something just goes wrong. I think if I was better at machine knitting and I didn't make these rookie mistakes, yeah, it would probably be quicker. But it isn't like switching on a button and letting it knit itself. I make all the decisions, same as when I hand knit. The only thing is that the actual row is one swift movement. But there's so many things that I need to do in the lace work before I can carry that out, so to speak. It's just another form of knitting and for me it's just interesting to be expanding my my knitting skills in that way. All right, so I think we're kind of back to the sort of frame that I used to have. So the last bit that I have to talk about in this episode is my acquisitions. I have got a couple of things in the mail. It was my birthday recently and my mom sent me a couple of things for that. So I thought I would show you because, you know, I need to account for the arnica that's coming in. 
So, as I talked about before, I'm having a hard time getting hold of some of my favorite yarns from Norway. As things stand right now, I can't really go to Norway. So, I rely on people's goodness to send me all the things. So, I got my mom to send me a sweater quantity of this yarn. This is Burgundy Sol, the kind of light DK weight lamb's wool by Hillesvog. I already have a sweater quantity in this in Vilja. I am also thinking of acquiring another sweater quantity in this because I know I'm gonna use this for a lot of things. It's the perfect weight, color, fiber, everything. I love this. So I have another like four of these upstairs. I have another five of these in a cart somewhere. <laughs> and I'm like, so I would normally get this from Troll and Wool in the Netherlands, but since the whole Brexit nightmare, you can't really order anything from anywhere. Uh, so that's, yeah, not brilliant uh, but anyone else in Europe can definitely get theirs from Troll and Wool so thanks mom. I also had her give me these four skeins so this is one green and one blue Sol and one green and one blue Vilja. Here's Vilja, here's Sol. They are very very similar yarns but Vilja is just slightly lighter so if I can give you a, a comparison here you can see the ways in which one is finer than the other. Obviously this one is a bit thicker so that's Sol and Vilja. It's just good for different things. Um, if you're wondering like how they compare to things like Fienöl, I would say maybe Vilja is a tad bit closer, but it sort of sits somewhere between these two. So this could be a thicker substitute, this could be a slightly finer substitute, and they're both softer. Those Fienöl has gotten a lot softer over the years as well. And they're good for sticking, they're good for color work, they're good for anything. I just want to bathe in this yarn and I wish more international stockists would consider stocking. All the lamps wool yarn from Hillesvog, uh, it seems like the, the pelt wool yarn is very, very popular. A lot of people are stocking that all over the world. Uh, pelt wool being Sölje, Varda, Tinde and Broma, those four yarns. Whereas the lamb's wool, which is Vilja and Sur, are quite hard to come by. And then you've got Ask and Emla and Troll, which are the sort of regular wools. They're also quite difficult to get hold of. Uh, not to mention the very fine uh, worsted spun yarns like Alv and Huldra. I don't know how to get hold of Huldra at all. And then you have the sock yarns Fjord and Fjell, which I really like because they're like DK and worsted weight pure wool and nylon yarns. They're great for color work socks, like nice thick color work socks, which I have been thinking about designing for years, but just because it's so hard to get hold of the yarn, it's like, well, what's the point in making designs if you can't get the yarn? But I think I want to do it anyway. Let me know what you think. So this was basically just my plea to anyone who has a yarn shop outside of Norway, especially if you're in Europe, especially if you're in the UK, to stock the other Hillesvog yarns as well, not just the pelt wool. Please, please, please. That's all I want. And all the colors, especially all the colors, especially the burgundy, I mean, come on. So that's that. My, my mom did not just send me uh, that yarn. She also sent me a book. There we are. I've been wanting this book ever since I heard it was gonna come out. This is The Mistake for Sticky Zilla by Tina Hoagland. So that means Women's Knits by Sticky Zilla, her business name. That's Tina Hoagland, that's her name. And this is her. She's a brilliant designer from Norway. You've seen a lot of her stuff lately, especially for my nephew, because she does do a lot of children's knits that I really do like. But she also does a lot of garments for the grown-ups. And finally, she has put that into a book. Yeah, maybe you remember this cardigan. Yes, that's, that's the one, that's the one I've got. You may also remember this pullover, the one that I made in Laland yarn that I finished recently. And yeah, I used the same colors as her. That's her. That's like, that's, yeah, I did that. I stand by that. Um, there is quite a few other things in here I would like to make. I mean, I would love to make this dress, but it's never gonna happen. Even with the machine, it's never gonna happen. But oh my God, do I want this in my life? But since making this skirt pattern of mine, I'm just like, yeah, no, it's gonna be a while until I do that again. I mean, skirts are fun to knit. You should knit mine. <laughs> Probably will do more skirts. It's really lovely to have a woolen skirt. So underestimated. Anywho, this one, I'm definitely gonna make with my sword yarn. And that is basically the reason why I am thinking of getting another sweater quantity. Because if I'm gonna be using it up for this sweater here, uh, this is made in Ask in the same color, but I want it in sword because sword is just a little bit softer. 
and that's just a reason enough for me. So if I'm gonna be using that up for that sweater, I do want more of it because I want to design with it. And other things, you know, I, I already got a design idea the other day, which is an incredibly simple idea. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we need simple. Maybe I need to not like think that I need to justify all my designs with doing like, all things are totally different from anything that exists. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get to now with my more recent designs, like all the ones I've shown you today, I've kind of tried to scale back a bit and just be like, you know what? The assembly of these are just a breeze. And I think I want to go a bit more there and just try not to add too many bells and whistles. Just keep it, you know, to the double tinder cardigan or the St. Castro pullover. And for people who like the silhouette, you know, you can just always take the chart out and you have some basic wear as well. But I should probably also make some more basic wear because like, it's funny to me that I'm like the color work designer and I'm um, exploring other textures. But the most popular patterns of mine are the ones that are pure stockinette, like pure fuzz and floof and sweater hug because people just really like the fit of them and they don't have anything else to them. Uh, to me that's very amusing and I can only say thank you. It was unexpected but much appreciated. So anywho, that was a digression to talk about my stuff. I was still talking about this book. I just also want to show you the gloves at the back of the book. Uh, it's obviously inside of it as well but look at that. That's ridiculous. That's so elegant. I love that. Uh, so to answer the obligatory question that I get every time, no I don't know that this is coming out in English, I don't know that it's available outside of Norway, I'm sorry, I don't know this stuff, I have to get people send me this stuff from Norway, I am not a retailer, I am not a wholesaler, don't ask me please, <laughs> I'm just here to shout out amazing products that I got my mitts on, thanks to my mom, and no she's not in the business of shipping out to everyone else, that would, wow, that, you don't want, you don't want my mom on that joke. So, uh, that's just scraping the top of the iceberg of the stuff that I acquired lately because I guess I've just felt like making up for the loss of all the festivals and yarn shop, you know, yarn shop crawls that I missed out on the past year. So I also placed a knit picks order and I've heard and read on their website for years that you can order from knit picks to the UK and they will take care of the import tax. So usually the reason you don't see so many things on this podcast from America is that if, or Canada or anywhere outside of the EU for that matter, and now it's just gonna be the UK, uh, uh, um, is because of the import tax. It's bananas, it's ridiculous. So I would love to support more people overseas, but I just can't deal with paying so much more because of the import tax. It's supposed to be like 20 to 25% or something, but then you add a fixed handling fee of eight pounds and then there's some other fees and you just end up paying almost twice as much. Uh, that's often why I found anyway, it's ridiculous. But there you go, you don't wanna hear me complain about that. What you do wanna hear about is that nitpicks do indeed take care of this stuff. I put it to the test and have indeed found out that, yeah, I got a big, parcel of nitpick skiddies and I only had to pay for the yarn. So here's some of the yarn. <laughs> I really like nitpicks and I want the few like fairly affordable brands that I don't have an issue with like ethical wise, business uh, ethics wise. So I am very excited to have a big order of them. Um, first of all, I got these two skeins. This is like a nice sort of Aubergine Burgundy Plum Color DK in Nitpicks Gloss, which is a Merino Silk Blend. I think it is, yes. Uh, you may think, well, that's so you, Ellie. That is so you. Um, I have no recollection of adding this to my cart. I have absolutely no plans with this. I have no idea how it ended up there. I checked my email of my order and yes, I did add it. And it does look like something I would buy. Oh, I, 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 what was I thinking? What was this gonna be, you know? I don't know. So now I'm thinking, I'm gonna do something like a cable hat or like gloves or like gauntlets or... What am I gonna do with it? What do you do with two the... It's gonna have to be a hat. Right, I'm gonna have to think of something. I just don't know how this happened. I also got a bunch of cotton linen yarns. This is their Kotlin yarn. I got two white and four blue, and that's all I'm gonna say, because I'm just, I am making a design. This is a DK weight cotton linen yarn. I am making something for the summer. Uh, definitely not gonna talk about that anytime soon, because just, you make hype and it dies down by the time it's May, you know, so 
let's wait to talk about that one. Summer comps, but it's going really well. Uh, I like the look of it. It's very like 30s vintage. Very, yeah. I've said too much. But I of course had to get some sweater quantities because I'm making a lot of sweaters. So clearly I am running in minus in sweater quantities in my stash. And stashes are much like sourdoughs. You have to keep feeding them. So I got myself some Wool of the Andes worsted weight. This is the non-superwash, the regular kind of Wool of the Andes. Uh, yeah. Am I gonna design with it? I'm gonna do someone else's stuff with it? I do not know. But look at that red. I do love me a bit of red. So I got a slight quantity of that. So each bowl is like 50 grams. So this is about 500 grams, which is usually more than enough for a sweater for me. But if I'm gonna do some cables, then you usually need more. So I also got this sweater quantity, which is in charcoal wool of the Andes worsted. And I thought, oh, I there's this Thea Coleman sweater called Widow's Kiss that I've been wanting to do for I don't know how long. I even go as far as printing it out. So I may cast it on soon. I just, I'm so busy with all my own designs that I don't know. But I bought another three skeins of it as well, just in case the cables mean I run out of yarn. I still seem to have too little to, to make my size. So I think I'm gonna modify a bit for length. Um, which I normally do anyway, so I'm probably gonna be just fine. So yeah, that's my tentative plan for this right now. Don't say I don't buy stuff without plans, I'm just... <laughs> a lot of times people ask me like, oh, you're buying that yarn, what's the plan for it? I'm like, a sweater? Is that a specific enough plan? <laughs> I think it is. So yeah, happy to tell fellow UK residents that getting nitpicks to the UK is actually quite easy and I will not be the last time that I do that. I always thought that that's something I had to go to America to get, so yay! <laughs> and that's not all that I got from Nitpicks because they were running a book sale. They might still be doing that, I don't know. And I thought, you know what, now's the time to fatten up my Barbara G. Walker book collection because I only have one of her Treasury of Knitting patterns and I thought I'd get the other ones. So this is the first A Treasury of Knitting patterns. Very famous stitch pattern dictionary. It's kind of one of the oldest ones. I'm sure you've seen all the stitches in here on various garments out in the world already. Uh, you have the second treasure of knitting patterns, which is even bigger. And then I have the third one upstairs already, thanks to Kristen who gave me her surplus copy. And there's the fourth one now. So now I guess I have all four, if four is the total number. Um, I don't like love these books. They are very, uh, like from afar, this is what they look like. They are grayscale, the photography could be better in some of them. Um, it's kind of a bit old school, but I think if you're you know, looking to use these to design with or to make your own stuff or to just kind of learn stitch patterns and expand your kind of knitting knowledge, um, you just kind of have to play your creativity. Like the book isn't necessarily supposed to tell you how, you know, to contextualize all these things. They're just elements that you can, you know, extract from this and then put into something else and I just love collecting books like this. I have a ton of stitch dictionaries obviously as a designer I kind of need to have that and it's a nice excuse to put knitting books on my business so. <laughs> but yeah Barbara G Walker is like a bit of a knitting legend. I think she was the one who made up the kind of short row satin sleeve that has made a lot of people feel like they can make satin sleeve constructions top down because you can just do short rows back and forth. I believe that was her. Bit of a knitting legend. The, the, all these books are released on Schoolhouse Press, which I think is like the whole Elizabeth Zimmerman thing. So yeah, I feel like I'm kind of filling up my knitting back catalog a bit there. Uh, I don't think it's all about getting the latest and newest, the flashiest book and pattern and yarn and whatever. Uh, there is a reason these are classics, so that's kind of why I wanted them. I have another acquisitions that I'm so sorry I didn't manage to bring here today, but it is two hanks of burgundy Vaxpo linen yarn from Sweden that I bought at Knit With Attitude. I am again just kind of thinking potential summer knits here. I have no plan yet, but yeah, I am. I should have brought it here, but yeah, alas. So the next acquisitions that I have is this book that Thanks to some viewer not here, you know who you are. Um, I was told that Nora Gorn has a book on twisted stitches and I've just done a sweater on twisted stitches and I'm kind of obsessed with twisted, twisted stitches. And I already have Nora Gorn's cable knitting source book. So of course I want to get her a twisted stitch source book. I mean, of course. And for anyone who probably, you know, has followed me for a while will know that I tend to get a little bit on the sort of collector, collector's mentality. 
You know, if I've started to buy Nora Gorn books, I would buy all of them, so why haven't I bought this yet? Well, I kind of just thought that Twisted Stitches was a one-by-one -one cable. I didn't know that they were a totally different stitch, that you don't do any, like, putting one stitch behind or in front of the other, uh, no cable needles, it's a very, very simple stitch, uh, even though I had technically done it when I did the Siri card again. Finally, I'm sort of opening up my eyes to this, and I'm a bit late to the party, but... I, I do love Nora Gorn books and her patterns, and so I'm gonna be enjoying this book a lot, I think. I did get it just yesterday, so apologies that I don't have a lot to say about that yet, but yeah, that's that's what I have to say so far. Also wanna give a bit of an apology to people who were expecting me to review that Knit Pro needle gift set. I have simply just not find the time to both plan out what I'm gonna say and when I can record it, so yeah. I, I will. If you have any questions about it, if there's something you're curious about, any, not just those needles, but needles in general, you can ask. I may put that in a video. So that wraps up my acquisitions and that, I guess, wraps up this episode. So all that I have left to say is life stuff. There isn't much to say. We aren't really doing a whole lot uh, as a we collectively. It's locked down, we're just kind of staying home to stay safe and keep other people safe. I've been watching a lot of television and I've been enjoying WandaVision, I've been re-watching The Expanse and I've been working a lot on the knitting machine. So all in all, I am just keeping myself busy, doing stuff that I really like and kind of just enjoying this uh, kind of time in between my thesis submission and me defending it and so until then I'm just kind of like knitting holiday although it, a lot of it is work it just doesn't quite feel like work because I enjoy it so much. I also did recently make a plan for all the garments and accessories that I want to publish during 2021 and it's completely unachievable like what am I thinking I can't do all these things but that's what I'm doing so <laughs> I want to have some things for the summer. I want to definitely complete all the garment patterns I have on the needles. I want to get more accessories out there. I want to have a club of some sort. You know what? I'm not going to be idle anytime soon. So I'm good. And I hope you guys are doing well too. And I hope you enjoy this episode. And I'm going to try to be better at reminding you to please subscribe and click the bell icon if you want notifications. Leave a comment if you have anything you want to say. Um, no pressure, just saying that would help me out a lot and it's nice. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.